to Vlogmas. Wow, we are we're already in December, apparently. Wow. Ugh, why do I keep messing up? Today I'm here with my wrap up for October 2017. As of right now, it's October 27th, so I'm thinking I might be able to push through like one more. But I'm just gonna add that into my November wrap up because your girl needs to get this filmed this weekend while she's actually at home. I'm gonna end up splitting this into two parts because we all know your girl likes to ramble about books. So I have 11 books to talk about. So I'm probably gonna talk about like five or six in this video. And then the rest in the next video, the last five are all from Spookathon. So like you can probably just watch my Spookathon wrap up if you wanna know more about those books. But I feel like I need to break this up because I never stop rambling like I'm doing now. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book I read was Dreamfall by Amy Plum. And this was actually one of my most anticipated books for October. And I ended up giving it only a 2.5 out of 5 stars. I really wanted to like it, but it just fell super short for me. It's about these seven teenagers who deal with crippling insomnia. They decide to undergo an experimental procedure in the hopes of finding a cure. The procedure ends up going wrong, and they quickly realize that they are actually in this dream world where they are in their worst nightmares. So now they need to work together in order to get out of this dream world before it's too late. So as I said, the book really fell short for me. I really wanted to like it. The concept of the story was really interesting to me. I think that it just dragged on way too long and it just became super repetitive. All the dreams kind of felt like they were the same after a while. It honestly almost felt like the plot line was going around in circles and the author had no idea where she wanted to take it. It was really interesting how the story was told in three points of views though. There were two of the teenagers who were stuck in the dream world but then there was also one research assistant that was named Jamie and he was outside the dream world and it was kind of him trying to piece together what was happening to the kids inside of the dream world. I kind of felt that all the characters were really flat and they were all very one-dimensional. I couldn't really tell them apart from each other. The whole point of Jamie's chapters were to give you background knowledge on each of the participants of the experiment so that was really the only time you would learn anything about them. Otherwise they all just kind of seemed like the exact same person. The plot overall was fast-paced. The chapters were really short so it was easy to read but it just wasn't for me and there was a huge cliffhanger at the end which kind of intrigued me, but then again, I'm kind of like, I don't really care that much enough to pick up the sequel, so. The next book that I picked up was The Scorpion Rules by Erin Bell. Or Bell, I'm not 100% sure how to say that, to be honest. But I actually did like this one. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 star. This book features Talus, who is an artificial intelligence who took over the world many years ago. When he took over the world, he forced every country in the world to put forth a hostage. These hostages are the heir of each world leader and they are called the children of the peace. Basically, if your country wants to call war on another country, both of your children of peace are executed. The book follows Greta, who is a Canadian princess. She has always been known to follow the rules. So when Elias, who is the replacement children of the peace for America, comes into the camp. He causes a lot of trouble, which causes Greta to start to realize that everything that she thought she knew is actually in jeopardy, and it's kind of the story of the rebellion against Talus, I guess you could say. It's really interesting if you read it. It would make a lot more sense than what I'm trying to talk to you about because I don't want to spoil it, but like it's real good. It was a really unique take on a dystopian novel. I hadn't seen anything like it before. It was kind of weird because I would find myself laughing a lot of the time, which you wouldn't really think you would be doing during a dystopian novel, but it was actually a really funny book. I really loved Talus. He was such a good villain. He was so funny and sarcastic, and I loved how, like, if he didn't get his way, he was just like, we'll blow up everybody. We're just gonna blow up everybody. Like, I feel like that would be me as a villain. I didn't really like Greta, so that was kind of why I gave a lower rating. She just wasn't anything special to me. I did end up liking her a lot better in the end compared to the beginning of the story when she started questioning everything. That was a lot better than Greta who followed all the rules. She was just super annoying. I really liked Elian. He is such a precious baby and he deserves so much better and I'm so bitter about it. I also really liked how the romance was a total back burner in this story. It focused more on the government and how that was all 
portrayed in the book, it was way better than romance. Because sometimes your girl gets sick of romance, okay? I'm saying it. I, sometimes I need no romance, and this book definitely provided There was a little bit of a love triangle, but I could handle it, honestly, because the rest of the book was so entertaining. There's also an LGBTQ plus element in the book. I don't want to say what it is because then like spoilers, but I really liked that part of it because I was not expecting it. And also, there's a lot of goats in this book and your girl likes goats, so I was totally happy about it. The next book I picked up, I actually got sent by the author, so thank you to Ursula for sending me a copy of her book, but it is The Perfect Partner by Ursula Le Cor, and I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It follows Karen Bouchard, who works for her local newspaper while she's trying to sell her romance novel on the side. She writes an advice column for the newspaper under the pseudonym Jacqueline. When her boss assigns her a writing partner, she is not very pleased. It is a man named Vespasian Colville, who she has known her entire life and they don't really get along. She has always thought that he is arrogant and self-centered and Vespasian has always thought that she is a prude and stuck up. When Karen's novel ends up getting rejected by a lot of publishers, she decides to ask Vespasian for love advice and to help with her writing because he has a lot of experience and she does not. When sparks begin to fly between them, things become interesting when they receive a letter from a person who believes that they are being poisoned by their family members. So now they need to work together in order to save this young woman before it is too late. The book was actually very entertaining. I didn't think I would like it as much as I did, Honestly, I'm not super big on like historical romances, but I thought I would give it a try because the synopsis sounded really interesting and I'm very glad that I did. I really liked Vespasian and Karen together. I thought they worked super well together and I thought they were really cute in my opinion. The hate to love trope is one of my favorite tropes, so I really enjoyed this story because of that. The poison subplot was also a great addition to the story because it provided a lot of mystery and suspense which you wouldn't normally get in a romance book, so I really liked that aspect of it. Overall, it was a super quick, fun read, and I actually do recommend it if you want to check out a historical romance. The next book I have, I honestly was going to do a rant review video on it, and then I realized that it's not even worth a rant review video because that's how much I hated this book. It is My Favorite Fangs by Alan Goldsher. And I just, nope, I gave it a one out of five stars. If I could give it a zero out of five stars, I would, but that's not an option on Goodreads. The book is supposed to be like a satire on The Sound of Music, and I just can't with it. It follows Maria, who is a vampire, and she lives among her zombie sisters in the zombie alley. So when Mother Zombie kicks her out of the zombie alley, she heads to the Von Trapp mansion to be the Von Trapp children's new nanny. Upon arriving, Maria turns all the children into vampires and marries Captain Von Trapp, and then the Nazis start to threaten her new vampire family and she takes matters into her own hands before they can stop her. And it was stupid and I hated it and that is all I'm going to say about it. I would just 100% not recommend this book, like don't read it, don't even pick it up, don't even look at it because it was terrible. The final book that I picked up for this month, I loved two pieces. It is Never Let You Go by Chevy Stevens. I ended up giving this a 5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I have a full review if you're interested in it, so I'm not going to go into details of my thoughts on it, but I would highly, highly, highly recommend reading it. It was a great thriller, and again, read the book. Alright guys, so those were the first chunk of books that I read for the month of October. I'm going to do a part two later on. I'm probably going to upload that on Wednesday, so check out that and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!